इसी से कनेक्ट है वेल ए वेरी हटी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरी वन एट द आउटसेट ऑन वे ऑफ ढेंकनाल साइंस सेंटर ए यूनिट ऑफ नेशनल काउंसिल ऑफ साइंस म्यूजियम्स मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया यू वेलकम ऑल द व्यूअर्स हियर आई वेलकम प्रोफेसर विनोद के पराशर सर फ्रेंड्स आज यू ऑल नो टुडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग वर्ल्ड वाटर डे एंड पराशर सर इज द राइट पर्सन टू डू दिस webinar parasar sir is uh, working as professor in department of geology uh, government motilal bhora mahavidyalaya bhopal sir has worked in uh, volkar college the renowned college in the in department of geology also he has uh, been in charge of the principal on several uh, for a uh, few days sir is a uh, research supervisor in uh, barkatullah university and a life member of more than 10 indian scientific organizations parasar sir has published uh, around 25 uh, research papers on water quality and organized around 75 conferences and seminars and he has delivered uh, more than 100 lectures motivational and awareness lectures he is uh, very much associated with the students i have seen him in uh, bhopal and the sir was also uh, the first convener uh, indian science congress association bhopal chapter as today we all are celebrating world water day water water is the elixir of life and uh, today is the day we all should um celebrate this and uh, make a change in the society this is the day to educate celebrate reflect and make a difference in our society and this year's theme is ground water making the invisible visible so parasar sir is uh, very much associated with uh, this uh, water management and its conservation we had delivered several lectures on this theme and because of this pandemic we are uh, organizing this event online uh, parasar sir uh, welcome and uh, i'm sure we have with us such a luminary today and uh, professor sir's uh, deliberations will definitely enlighten and enrich all of us and uh, as this event is being organized online uh, we can reach to a larger section of the society the lecture will be delivered uh, and we will be uh, simultaneously live streamed in our social media pages and in our headquarter also so i won't take uh, much time now instead of wasting time may i request parasar sir uh, please take over and uh, enlighten all of us parasar sir please thank you sir thank, thank you also thank you for kind words uh, i'm sharing
सुरेंद्र तम कंप्यूटर चेक कर and uh, this year's topic is uh, very very precious you can say ground water that is making the invisible visible because you can't see the ground water and ground water is present in the rocks so this is very i think a, a good talk uh, because i am a man of hydrogeology and so i will discuss more on these issues as you know the world water day is celebrated every Twenty uh, second March to highlight the importance of fresh water, and the tradition has continued since nineteen ninety three. According to the UN website, more than two point two billion people they live without the access to safe water, and the concept and idea for this day goes back all the way to nineteen ninety two in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil when the UN. conference on environment and development took place and they have decided to observe this world water day on every second mar 22nd march to uh, mobilize the people in mobilize mobilize the society for the conservation and management of water resources so this year theme you know is the ground water making invisible visible and you know what water is very fundamental resource for life and sustainable development means if the water is available it should be continued for another 5 10 years century and their management should be a become a very very challenge in india because in india the population is more and more and we are growing urbanization the rapid industrialization all these issues uh, shows that the water is a very very deficit in nature and we have to conserve and manage the water resources we can live without food for more than a month this is very true but we cannot live without water for more than a week in some organisms like jellyfish for example 90% of its body weight comes from water in our human body also it is approximately 60% is water our brain is composed of 85% of water our blood is 79% and the lungs are nearly 80% the water resources you can see on the surface of the earth the 97% is the ocean you can say uh, if you see the continents and land masses the continents are 29% 29% and the 71% oceans and the other water bodies are reservoirs rivers lakes ponds and tubes wells and comes so, so many things so many resources that are there but the source of energy for all these things is the sun that is radiation and the source of water is rainfall precipitation you can say so the water comes from the atmosphere to the surface and it rotates and it belongs to the hydrologic cycle because hydrologic cycle plays a very important role and the ocean which has a maximum amount of water and this sun which is very very important energy is there so sun radiation continuous radiation and due to this evaporation starts formation of water vapor formation of clouds and when the clouds it moves it goes up and due to the where velocity of the wind wind direction these water vapor these clouds move from one place to another place and they collide each other sometimes they collide to the mountains and thus 
the precipitation starts, the condensation starts, adiabatic cooling, and due to this adiabatic cooling, the water vapor state uh, changes into the liquid state. And due to unfavorable conditions, sometimes the liquid state changes again into the solid state and form the snow and hail. But if the favorable conditions are there, and due to the adiabatic cooling, the condensation occurs, and this rain comes on the earth surface. When it comes on the earth surface, it intercepted by mountains, trees, and the other other thing, other objects on the surface of the earth, and ultimately it comes in contact with the soil or the rock. Then, depend upon the soil and rock, the porosity plays a very important role. Porosity means the number of pores present in a rock or a soil. Then when it comes in contact with the soil or rock uh, and the, the porosity is favorable, the water percolates down. If it is percolated down in the soil, the soil zone is saturated. And again, it percolated down depending on the porosity of the rock. It will filter down and form the another form of water that is called the groundwater. And this groundwater is very, very important. You can't see. That's why it is invisible. And this invisible water plays a very important role in our society, in our because maximum uh, people, they are using this groundwater nowadays. Everybody. They are rely on the groundwater because the groundwater is very precious, very pure. Next. So you have seen the hydrologic cycle, the character, the precipitation comes on the surface and the saturation zone becomes the groundwater. And the zone of the upper layer of the zone of saturation is the water table. And this water table fluctuates. When the summer comes, when we extract more water, this water table goes down. And when the winter comes or you can say the uh, during the monsoon, this water table goes up. Means Below the water table, all the voids, all the pores are saturated with water. This is the, uh, you can say, imaginary line. Water table is an imaginary line which controls, which controls the fluctuation. If you see the global water budget, uh, yes. forget about the uh, data which is here, but you see 97.2% water is present in ocean that is saline water we are not using it but this is very important for the hydrologic cycle and 2.80 water is available as fresh water. and out of this 2.80 if you see 2.20 percent is surface water and out of this 2.20 if you see 2.15 this is available as glacier so 2.15 and 97.2 percent, both the both this water we are not using because this is a glacier water and this is a saline water. And 0.01 percent water is found in lakes and reservoirs. You see uh, how much water in streams. This is 0.04 percent. But uh, we can see we always say the water is available available everywhere because we can see the streams, rivers, reservoirs, but we are forgetting about this groundwater, which is available 0.60% out of this 2.80, 0.60% is groundwater, which we can't see, and this is the invisible water. And groundwater is one of the primary source of drinking water in the country nowadays. If you uh, buy a plot, or you want to start a construction of your house, firstly, what you will do? You have to drill a bore well. And everywhere you can see, every house, a dug well is there, bore well is there. And we are fetching water from the bore well. And every, not, not only in urban places, in rural places also, you will see the irrigation they are mostly the groundwater they are using for the agriculture so this is an important resource of water in our country so ne nearly 70 percent of the groundwater resources available in the country are confined to the indo 
Ganga Brahmaputra Plains, which is covering about 30% of the geographical area. So groundwater is emerged as the backbone of India's agriculture and drinking water security. Because uh, people, that's why I'm saying, no, nobody is relying on the surface water because surface water is contaminated and polluted. So they are relying on the groundwater only. And most of the uh, farmers, they are using agri for agriculture purposes also. So in Maharashtra, I've seen the groundwater table is depleting day by day and the summers are approaching. You need more water. And after 15 days, after a month, you will see the groundwater depleted uh, by one meter, two meter like this. So the contribution of groundwater is nearly 62% in irrigation, 85% in rural water supply and 50% in urban water supply. Because the piped water, the government scheme is like this. If we have to provide water to each and everyone. So the groundwater is an annually replenishable. This is a resource. We have to recharge the uh, groundwater. If we don't recharge the groundwater, that groundwater goes down and down. If it is goes down and down, it cannot be So in the present assessment, as per the Central Groundwater Report, the country has been assessed as 436.15 billion cubic meter groundwater. And keeping an allocation of our natural discharge, the annual extractable groundwater resource has been assessed as 392.62 billion cubic meter. Now this is all data. We have, we have not discussed all these things because you belong to the Odisha, you all. They have been going through water scarcity, drought, floods, groundwater depletion, and much more. You have seen both the floods and the uh, drought also. So this time, the important thing is to manage the groundwater resources. That is very, very important. And government is planning for interlinking of rivers also. So that is a debatable thing. Environment is doesn't want to uh, interlink the rivers, but Anyhow, uh, for future uh, course of time, the interlinking of rivers, I think, will be promising. So in Odisha, the groundwater extraction has increased to 42% from 30% in four years between 2013 to 14, 17. And this is uh, 22. Uh, I think more than uh, more percentage has been increased. There is a massive increase in annual groundwater extraction. CCWB, that is the Center Groundwater Board, clearly indicated that the groundwater of 24 out of 30 districts in Odisha is depleting. The groundwater aquifers in many regions of Odisha have already gone dry. So where the groundwater is there? Well, groundwater present in the rock formations, geologic formations. So the geologic formation which has a good number of water you can say that is called the aquifers aquifers means water bearing formations the different layer of rocks either it is uh, granite sandstone any type of rock the uh, in these these rocks the voids are there pores are there where the groundwater is present and significant amount of water can be stored it can be transported from one place to another so this is the property of porosity and the permeability. Porosity means the water can be stored and permeability means to transmit water from one place to another. And you can't see because their movement is different. Their laws are different for the groundwater movement. So they are in irregular in shape. They can be close to the surface. Sometimes it's very deep also. So under your home, there may be several aquifers layered one on top of another because in a, beneath the earth, there are several types of rocks which are present and they behave like aquifers. Sometimes these, these rocks doesn't have uh, water, so they, we, can, we can say that they aquifuse, aquifuse, there are so many terms for this. Per aquifers are the geological formation which can store water and which can transmit water. There are two different types of uh, aquifers that is the confined aquifers and the unconfined aquifers. 
and confined aquifers are generally on the top shallow aquifers you can say uh, but the confined aquifers are confined between two different layers one is impermeable and below is also impermeable in between there is another formation where the pores are saturated with the water only one rock in which the water is flowing like a stream that is the limestone limestone country rocks there is a cast topography area where the rocks are in uh, limestone dolomite marble marl calcium made up of calcium carbonate it reacts with the water it uh, decomposes and uh, caves cavities caverns and caves also uh, originated below, below the uh, rock surface beneath the earth and you can't see but uh, sometimes it uh, the stream is flowing like this in limestone countries the other rocks except the limestone all the rocks are have pores and these pores are voids is a uh, very very important for the ground water occurrences like this you can say this is the water table and this is the unsaturated zone and this water table and these rocks they are saturated with the these pores the there is a rock in which all the pores are saturated with water so the upper layer of this saturation zone is called the water table and the uh, above the water table this is the zone of aeration means air space the voids which contains air not water but the voids which contain water this is called the saturated zone and we have to drill a tube well like this up to this air and you will get the water here this is unconfined aquifer but i am talking about this unconfined aquifer is close to the surface and this is the confined unit where the upper and lower the two different formation and the water is under pressure sometimes when the drill where tube well is drilled in somewhere this place the water is coming out up to this place and sometimes it flows on the surface so two important properties what i'm thinking talking is porosity and the permeability porosity is the number of volume in the pore spaces and its percentage that is called the porosity in percentage and the permeability the ability of a material to transmit fluid from one place to another these two important properties make the aquifer or you can say water bearing formation like this these are the pore spaces at the time of the formation of rock because you can't see a rock under microscope you can see the grains are arranged like this and between the grains these spaces you can see these spaces are called pore spaces and the water is infiltrated here only and it moves vertically horizontally vertically horizontally and sometimes the cementing material is there also. these cementing material sometimes clog the pores so we won't get the aquifers because the porosity become less in sometimes the porosity is more so on the basis of the porosity you can store the water and the porosity affected by its particle size the shape of the particle the sorting of the particles the amount of material cementing the grains together if the fractures are there and the internal arrangement of particles uh, such a favorable then only you can store the water and naturally it can store the water it's not a a uh, human process or human uh, mechanism it is a natural process so this type of porosity is called the original porosity and suppose if suppose uh, if the stress is there strain is there some pressure is there sometime rocks deform and at that time some uh, fractures or joints develop in these rocks and they will be surendra valla in secondary porosity also, uh, there is a possibility of water so the typical porosity values in the soil it is 55% gravel 20 to 40% sand is 25 to 50% silt and clay it is also uh, more porosity uh, if about the rocks and stone is 5 to 30 shale 0 to 10 because shale is impermeable rock 
सोल्यूशन लाइम स्टोन डोलो स्टोन जो मैंने आपको बताया दिस इज कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट रॉक्स इट हैज टेन टू थर्टी परसेंट एंड फ्रैक्चर्ड बेसल्ट फ्रैक्चर्ड मीन्स आफ्टर द डिफॉर्मेशन ऑफ रॉक दिस दिस बिकम द सेकेंड डिपोरोसिटी इट इज फाइव टू फोर्टी परसेंट तो मटेरियल विथ हाई पोरोसिटी एंड हाई परमिलिटी बिकम्स मोस्टली सैंड ग्रेबल सैन स्टोन फ्रैक्चर लाइम स्टोन फ्रैक्चर ग्रेनाइट दे आर द गुड एक्फर्स एक्फर्स आर दोरस परमिबल लेयर कैपेबल ऑफ ट्रांसमिटिंग ग्राउंड वाटर दिस इज दर डेफिनेशन ऑफ दर एंड एक्विक्लूड इज एम परमिबल लेयर दिस इज प्रिवेंटिंग मूवमेंट ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर एक्विक्लूड एक्विक्लूड मीन्स इट कैन स्टोर वाटर बट इट कैन नॉट ट्रांसमिट वाटर तो शेल्स एंड अनफ्रैक्चर्ड इग्रियस एंड मेटामोफिक रॉक क्रिस्लाइन लाइम स्टोन दे बिहेव लाइक ए एक्विक्लूड and the well rounded well sorted sand and gravel these become a very good aquifers as you men i mentioned you confined aquifers and confined aquifers already mentioned this is the water table again uh, how we have to deal a tube well like this and uh, by putting a pump we can take out the water or yeah. these are the small things you have mentioned the uh, pores how the pores become in the different drop form and this is saturated zone this is unsaturated zone this is a well the pores are not saturated so in unconfined aquifer systems only so the boundary between the saturated and unsaturated pore spaces this is the water table in between both the things so the ground water is confined between impermeable layers two impermeable layers are there the water is confined in between them that is the confined aquifer like this Two impermeable layer, and this is the confining bed. So sometimes a deep aquifer is also there. If the rocks are intercalating, uh, suppose thousand meter, then again the confining beds are present over here. Then again the second type of aquifer is present in such a formations. These are the zone of aeration. This is zone of uh, saturation. Sometimes the water pressure it comes goes to this, and it is the influent or gaining steam. So steam is gaining by the underground water. This is effluent stream. So the uh, water is recharging the ground water. This type of uh, stream is called effluent stream. Sometimes the uh, water table intersect the surface. it forms the springs and such springs you can say cold springs hot springs you might have seen in the at the foot is these springs are also is a ground water conditions so aquifers are geological formation they are layers of sand gravel and rock where sufficient amounts of water can be stored this i have already discussed the ground water flows vertically originally as i mentioned And through the aquifers, at the some rates, movement are there, and they are influenced by gravity, and they move from one place to another. So the groundwater can remain in an aquifer for a short period also. It measured in we can say days, and sometimes for many centuries also. So that is also called the fossil water. This is centuries years old. So we have to recharge this groundwater. we have do, do not face this ground water because ground water is very precious in fact the deep aquifers are considered fossil aquifers as the water in them been for more than 10000 years how long does it take for an aquifer to recharge it is very slow process the rate of water flow into an aquifer it is a recharge rate it varies according to the relief features strata uh, porosity permeability nature of the rocks so the factor which are influence the recharge they have a climate if the uh, hydrologic cycle is favorable then the topographic is relief is is not undulating is slopy and geology must this is very very important in uh, rock formations and the type and amount of vegetative ground cover it should not be a uh, naked rock some soil must be there some vegetative cover is there so it will percolate down and the aquifer become recharged properly 
over use of ground water for urban rural and industrial uses can cause temporary or permanent declines in the quantity of the earth. overuse can also cause subsidence where the land sinks is an example of uh, uh, some european countries where the cast topography is their limestone area sometimes what happened uh, internally the rocks have been decomposed and a thick layer of uh, rock is over there and by the weight of the some uh, car or truck or any heavy machinery sometimes they subside uh, on there itself so this type of uh, uh, things you can see in the european countries where the land sinks and in, in, uh, in the uh, maximum in cases the uh, cast topography areas sometimes you have seen the recharge areas are paved with roads nowadays in urban places you might have seen all the roads all the parking lots they are covered with paved pebbles with impervious surface means no water can be trickled down so water cannot soak into the ground because this is very important if you cannot soak into the ground you cannot replenish the no water supply so you have to remove all these type of paved ones and we have to use something like this to so there is some space where the precipitation or rainfall water can be trickled down adding to this problem paved surface collect oils salts animal waste antifreeze and other pollutants sometimes what happen uh, these uh, things are also available on the paved surfaces which again if it is a uh, find the space it goes down and contaminate the ground water so when it rains these pollutants become part, part, part of the strong water runoff so when it not, not goes down so after rainfall what happens these pollutants collective uh, and according to the gradient it goes to the nearby places from where it goes down to the infiltrated downwards percolate downwards and polluted the uh, groundwater area so it is the important lesson so we have to clean the groundwater and surface water we need to prevent all possible pollutants from being poured on the ground this is very very important to uh, save the groundwater resources so our surface fresh water resources may be a rivers wetlands uh, stream channels are influenced by geological process and by the activities of human like agricultural waste dumping industrial waste electronic waste dumping so there are so many dumping sites in the urban areas where we are keeping all the dumps and after dumping so much and due to the weight of this dump the uh, suppose sometimes heavy metals and the other things they are percolating down and it contaminates the ground water and once the ground water is contaminated it cannot be repaired or and if it, it will not be repaired and if you take a simple of a glass of water you will be affected so contaminants can seep into ground water from leaking underground tanks sea spools septic tanks landfills pesticides and fertilizers also they are used on the farm lands and lands they also can find their way into the ground water because they can uh, discharge from the factories so common pollutants include bacteria from septic systems nitrates from fertilizer application and from septic system all the these, these are the slow poison because it says slowly it react it goes to the soil zone and ultimately it goes to the uh, ground water zone so when it goes to the ground, ground water zone and its quantity is uh, more than the uh, uh, permissible limit it becomes uh, contaminated and this contaminated water will harm the human body other possible contaminants includes petroleum products pesticides detergents hazardous chemicals and polluted runoff from pumped services source of contaminants can be very close to a well or miles away because underground you can't see 
it moves it's slow it, it's a movement is a different the movement can be fast also and it can be slow also so groundwater movement and groundwater occurrences is very very important thing contamination dissolved contamination travel with groundwater flow these are the groundwater flow it moves like this yeah say suppose this is dumping yard landfills and it goes down it percolated it seeps down slowly slowly and slowly slowly it goes to the groundwater surface and according to groundwater movement it moves according to its gradient and it moves like this in other direction also and it saturated where where are the aquifer formation are there where is the aquifer it goes slowly to these direction and when when there is a pumping the uh, is a contamination water goes up and it comes in the water supply so this will be very dangerous for human being like this suppose the gas lines gasoline storages they they can also if it is a impermeable rock is there there is no nothing will be happened but suppose if they are permeable rocks these are the pores so these chemicals can be transmitted in the groundwater and contaminate the aquifers and this the septic uh, tank human waste nitrates pathogen salts they also seeps down and it goes down to the groundwater and these groundwater can be contaminated and when we will get this water in the supply the high nitrates high pathogens and you know the 80% disease is water borne diseases from the water only so what are the problems associated with groundwater over exploitation this is a lowering of the groundwater level when the more water is exploited it lowers the groundwater level water level goes deeply down it increase cost for the user if the water level is uh, very low so we have to use pump and for this uh, pump we have to use the electricity and the cost of the uh, become more and more so increase cost for the user then reduction of water availability in water bodies then water availability is not there in water bodies and deterioration of water quality because the less water quality water quantity is there the quality certainly differs what are the benefits of groundwater recharge if we recharge the groundwater by naturally or by artificially the subsurface store space is available free of cost it's a natural process at some time artificially also but the space is available free of cost we can send the water bodies inside the artificially or naturally evaporation losses are negligible there is no question of evaporation because it goes down and temperature variation are minimum this is quality improvement by infiltration through the permeable media it has no adverse social impacts such as displacement of population there is no shifting at all loss of scarce agricultural land no question of agricultural land no land is lost so you know benefit hai. this is groundwater recharge is certainly a benefit for the society for the uh, uh, further future generation it is a convenient friendly technology that controls soil erosion and flood like situations and it provides sufficient soil moisture during dry spell or water deficit condition so groundwater recharge is must it should be done by each and every one at the time of the rainfall you must uh, collect all these uh, rainfall rainfall water precipitation and it should be uh, naturally or artificially should be recharged into the uh, aquifers so water there are so many techniques artificial techniques also spreading basins you can spread the water you can recharge pits and shafts there are ditches are there the recharge wells are there the harvesting in sinistral means from a big bog, uh, 
barrels you can uh, put on from the hill sides then the harvesting can be done then subsurface dams you can place the subsurface dikes so you can store water at some place farm ponds farm ponds means uh, naturally you can uh, uh, store water in some depressed areas so uh, that will increase the groundwater and uh, historical large well across the streamlet so according to many tributaries a large well should be recharged properly so it become a recharge well you have to construct check dams also for artificial recharge techniques in a niti aayog report uh, it is clearly mentioned that 21 uh, cities of india they will face water problem if you see this is the high risk kanpur agra jaipur nashik this is a high risk surat pune bhopal also is mumbai all metros okay so there are 21 uh, cities as per the niti aayog uh, claims that 21 major cities of india will run out of the water and they will face day zero means the ground water is depleted down you will uh, he will not or the city will not get water a term that got popular after the major water crisis in cape town in south africa so in our country also we will face the uh, day, day zero so that your report also says that 40% of india's population will have no access to drinking water by 2030 so this is the report but yeah, if, yeah, yeah we have to do um, we have to do uh, by to the we maintain the water management if you do the proper management or you can say recharge the proper uh, water resources then this uh, year you can change the year also you can survive by 2050 also so can okay, take the case of the chennai there are three rivers four water bodies five wetlands and six forests they have completely dried in chennai despite having better water resources and drains than any other metro cities so this is the condition of chennai they are in all the other metros also in the coming years we they, have, they will face the problem during summer 21 in the cities including delhi bangalore chennai hyderabad they will run out of ground water and it will affect more than 100 million people this is a report by niti aayog and this is very true metros will face water shortages so we have to manage the water resources there are so many things we have to see the important facts the water the water challenges we have to face and what are the solutions there are so many solutions and think globally and act locally the slogan is like this so we have to conserve manage water resources from our home itself the surface water you can see everywhere for most of the surface water is polluted but there is direct relation of surface water with the ground water if the surface water is rich your ground water will be certainly rich if the, your surface water is contaminated your ground water will be contaminated and if the ground water is contaminated it cannot be repaired it cannot be repaired for several years so india is only 4% of the world renewable water resource and 18% of the world population is here we receive 4000 billion cubic meter of water which is the principal source of fresh water in the country as a precipitation as a rainfall and the important fact is the population of world is around 6 billion and it is expected to exceed 8 billion by the year 2050 if you see our india the population of india is 1.30 billion which is about 16% of world population india has 2.45 of the world land resources and 4% of the world water resources we have a sufficient water resources and the important facts uh, rao sahab bata dijiyega time 
नहीं नहीं सर कैरी ऑन ओके बिकॉज वेरी नाइसली यू आर एक्सप्लेनिंग सर इट विल बी लाइव इट इज लाइव स्ट्रीम पीपल कैन वॉच इट लेटर थैंक यू प्लीज प्लीज सो द एस्टिमेटेड पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंडिया इट विल बी ए 1394 मींस 1.39 बिलियन इन द ईयर 2025 सो एट दैट टाइम वी नीड 1341 1341 क्यूबिक मीटर पर ईयर and if you think about the 2050 the population must be around 1.64 billion which needs 1140 cubic meter per year this is the uh, source the uh, government of india 2009 so in 2050 we have to need 1140 cubic meter per year as you know we are using water for agriculture 80% then industries then domestic and the other business also we are using water for electricity also we are using energy production hydro projects and we need at least 135 liter for for each and every one we have to use 135 liter per day for drinking cooking bathing flushing everything gardening also but uh, minimum 20 40 liters water will sufficient if you use in the water crisis you can use 20 to 40 liter of water and that will be sufficient so then for is the main source of ground water recharge in the country as you know hydrology cycle rainfall is the main source of ground water and under favorable condition only if the porosity and permeability is there and the rocks are favorable then only you can recharge the water if the rocks are not favorable the water goes as runoff it goes according to its gradient so however distribution of rainfall has a wide variation both in space and time so the uh, rainfall is here is divided into four seasons winter pre monsoon southwest monsoon the southwest monsoon is very important for us most of the rainfall comes from south west monsoon and you see this is indian uh, map and the rainfall also annual rainfall now you see our rainfall uh, it's a more is east towards east the maximum rainfall and towards the west is the least rainfall, if you see sometimes 200 mm 200 mm and sometimes in the cherapunji you can say 11000 mm so it is uneven and india's annual rainfall is within the top 6 countries in the world this is very important we have a lot of rainfall but our management is not we have to properly manage the water resources this much of water we are getting in every uh, monsoon we have to protect all these we have to catch the rainfall and but we do not conserve the rain water this is very very unfair and this management to be done effectively don't go to the data you just see if the data is like this 370 million hectares meter water entire country so out of this 370 123 million hectares lost in evaporation 167 million hectares goes as runoff 80 million hectares meter goes as subsoil water it is percolated down 43 million hectares meter in soil moisture and only 37 million hectares meter as ground water so out of this 370 only 37 goes as ground water and the 123 you see it is lost in evaporation it goes back to the atmosphere 167 goes as runoff without percolating without infiltrating downwards so our monsoon is very brief for about 100 hours and in 100 hours the storm is too much if there is intermittent rain there will be a certainly a percolation infiltration but if the storm is there the percentage of percolating or infiltrating is very slow so 
we have to conserve manage these water resources and catch every drop of water population versus capita water availability this we have mentioned so in the year 2050 we have to uh, per capita is 1140 as i discussed and globally you see 80% of the waste water we are generating from the society it goes back to the environment without being treated or reused in urban areas only 50% not more than 50% uh, is water is treated but in rural areas and uh, small cities only 10% you can say 10% water is treated and the rest of the water goes without treatment to the water bodies and it contaminates it pollutes the water bodies the rivers and these rivers we are uh, getting water supply to the cities and if you see if the contaminated water is drinking by uh, citizens what will happen so we have to um, uh, install as many as stps sewer treatment plant so the reused water can be used again for agriculture or for other purposes one more thing this is very very important problem that is soil erosion that is from crop lands and this uh, soil erosion it come back on the surface and the important nutrients the soil has it goes off and these soil ability means soil fertility also goes down so there are now containing large amounts of nitrogen phosphorus there are major contribution of this soil it goes off so we have to protect these soil erosion also the, the better thing is we have to uh, plant more and more trees so that there will be no soil erosion another thing is the degradation of soil and desertification desert the area is becoming desert it coming to the desert form so for this also we have to plant more and more trees so that the soil acclimation is there at least 65% of forest land is a degraded state one more thing in urban areas you can see 30 to 40% water it is wasted in water distribution system because the distribution system is very old so every in city uh, you can uh, see this thing 30 to 40% water wasted around 80% water consumed by household wasted in drains as sewer 80% water it goes as waste in drains as sewer we are not using we are not recycling the kitchen water we are not recycling the uh, bathroom water if we recycle both these water and again pump to the top and again supply to the toilets so this much of water we can reuse also and after uh, toilet water that is a black water that can be uh, goes to the stps and after stps they will be treated or and the reused water recycled water can be used for other purposes also. and i mentioned the 70% of water wasted is run off because the rainfall is very very hazard as you can say the spell is very fast so the water is wasted as run off one more important fact we have 15 large rivers 45 medium rivers 120 minor rivers and if you see the rivers himalayan rivers perennial rivers the ganga and brahmaputra they are peninsular they are seasonal and if you see the 1955 billion cubic meter of water out of this ganga and brahmaputra it contributes 11 10 billion cubic meter or you can say 59% of total water of india so this is the total we can say ganga and brahmaputra they contribute 58.5% total water of india and this much this water should be preserved should be treated and should be planned properly so that the other bodies the other cities which are getting water from these rivers 
will not suffer. India's uh, per capita availability was 1730 cubic meter per person per year in 2006. It was close to the 1700 mark. This is what declared by the World Bank to be water stressed. So at the time, we are very near to the 2006, we are very near to the water stressed. Now we are water stressed. By 2025, the water availability is expected to 1341 cubic meter. This is very close, uh, it's close to the water scarce. 1000 mark by World Bank, it is given. So we are very close, 1341. But by 2050, this water per capita water availability is expected to decline to 1140 cubic meter. And it is very close to the water stressed. Water stressed number one is Israel. So, so by 2050, we are very coming close to the water stressed country <coughs> like Israel. So India is the 13th most water stressed country in the world. And in recent years, cities like Chennai, Bengaluru, Shimla, they will face acute water shortage. <clears throat> so vast area of the country, they have experienced drought. They are pushing women and children to run after water tankers to meet the bare minimum needs. So this year, again, Indian cities and villages in this summer also, the Bangalore, Chennai and the other metros, Bundelkhand, especially UP, they are facing for another spell of water shortage and the impact would be worse as the country is still battling COVID. Groundwater resource in the entire country is approximately 447 billion cubic meters. And as per this report, CGWB report, there are total 20 million tubes in India. It is more than 20 million. This is the official record. But uh, the other, other records are not maintained by CGWB. So it should be more than 20 million. So 50% of agricultural land is irrigated by groundwater. As per the Ministry of Water Resources, only 62% of the groundwater has been developed. Still, we have to develop the other. In urban areas, the groundwater is the principal source of water. As on 31st March 2020, this is the latest report of the Central Groundwater Board. The Our country, Indian, 6,965 blocks, mandals, taluks were assessed. Out of this, 16%, this is over exploit. 5% is critical. 14% is semi-critical. 64% is safe. And 9% is saline. But over exploited and critical, this is very important. If we manage the proper water resources, so we can change these figures. And it can come to the safe category. In Odisha also, 313 blocks are assessed. 58 are semi-critical, 2 are critical, 50, 25 are over-exploited, and 228 are safe. So the over-exploited and the critical, they have to think over it on these issues. The report also highlighted that India uses the largest amount of groundwater, 24% of the global total. This is more than the China and the US combined. And you know, this India is the third largest exporter of groundwater, 12% of the global total. We have uh, maximum groundwater, you can say. We have limited resources also, but we are well sufficient also. But we have to manage the water resource. If we properly manage the water resources, the, all the daughters will be closed. <coughs> I am not repeating all these things. Now the Indian situation. As the groundwater is depleted day by day, now the summer comes, the again you will see the groundwater is depleting. The surface water is polluting because all the uh, sewer is going to the uh, water bodies without treatment. The rainfall is wasted because only 100 hours rainfall and uh, during storms, the excess rainfall goes as wasted as runoff. Our population goes day by day. It's increasing. 
water demand will be more and more and the by resulting of these the consumption will be more and one more thing industrial growth it is also increasing because the population is more economy industry it is also because population is more water business population is more water business is more agriculture is diminishing because we are changing the agricultural land into urbanization our health and environment because the water is polluted our health and environment also goes down by seeing all these things our future will be uncertain our water availability in india is highly uneven as i mentioned before also with respect to both space and time we have seen both floods and drought odisha also has seen both the things floods and drought uh, mumbai metro this is a one of the very very uh, good example this is the old photograph 2003 times of india where is a uh, gujarat village where on the sunday where all the people they have gathered to fetch a glass of water in his is bucket of water so see how many uh, ladies are there they have come for a bucket of water you see the crisis we are facing in the rural areas this flood in chennai this is a water crisis all dry all dry you will see in summers how the problem these are the challenges we have to face the water is not safe for drinking polluted contaminated water they are waiting for rainfall they are going to fetch a uh, bottle after traveling 5 kilometers the sea the sewer the same what are the challenges we are challenging the public we are wasting water we have to we, when we will get the more water we are using too much when we are not getting water we are the water crisis is there so we have to maintain both the things at a time we do not waste the water and we do not pollute the water human human nature it is there we are polluting the water there is a global climatic change one degree temperature changes the complete scenario in mumbai also you will get the winter in chennai you will get the excess rainfall there are so many things this is a, due to the global climatic changes this happens millions of indians in 20 states are at risk due to excess fluoride and arsenic if you if you drink a glass of water you can cannot say, say this water is containing uh, any contamination because the water is colorless odorless everything and when you drink the water then only you feel this this water is having contamination when you get the disease approximately 14 billion millions are affected by water borne diseases and i know i mentioned earlier also 80% disease are the water borne diseases 1.5 million children are estimated to die of diarrhea alone india rivers carry 90% of the water during the period from june to november that is the monsoon period but only 10% is available during the other 6 months they are not perennial they are seasonal rivers and 250 out of 600 district in india have been declared drought by government of india at least 45% of india's land area is degraded 90% of the sewage generated by municipal councils and over 50% of sewage discharged by municipal corporation goes untreated in urban areas only you can say 50% otherwise the other cities is 80% on an average a rural woman walks more than 14000 km a year just to fetch water this is a record to get a bucket of drinking water is a struggle for wo- most women in the country so what are the challenges we have rivers have no flow in summer season we are heavy use of ground water without recharging we are taking out water but we are not recharging the pollution of surface and ground water 
this is very very unfortunate for us sewage water sewage connection you are bringing water into the city it is storage diversion pipe pump treat so many process so billion of rupees a million of rupees is wasted on this bring water into the city and flush and carry the waste you flush and forget you flush and carry the waste out of the city we are carrying this waste to the outside the city again pipe pump divert treat further and further away again million of rupees goes waste in the both the case both the cases we are wasting money so there must be a solution there is must be a solution we have to think over it and this chennai is bringing water from viram viranam lake 235 kilometers chennai again 300 kilometers viranam extension bengaluru kaveri 95 kilometers delhi tehri dam 500 kilometers hyderabad manjira dam nagarjun dam 100 105 kilometers mumbai vetrana dam tansa dam bhasa dam 90 kilometers and 105 kilometers jodhpur which was known as the city of uh, you can say reservoirs now they are facing the water crisis and they are uh, taking water from 200 kilometers away from indira gandhi canal bhopal indo they see narmada river 90 kilometers and the other cities also they are carrying water from the other places because the population become more and more after 20 years what will happen if you will not get anything any water resource you have to think after what the computers also so we have to manage the water resources we have to revive the water bodies revive the means old traditional methods like the reservoirs talabs uh, bawdi and the other uh, water harvesting structure which are present in the river villages and the cities they have to be maintained they have to be revived properly water legislation is there policy is there each and every one should get safe and uh, safe drinking water and water availability should be all this is the government ki uh, national water policy we have to conserve all the water bodies management of flood and drought all mentioned in the national water policy and it should be adopted by the states there should be a watershed management planning there should be a research and training institute where we have to uh, teach the water resources water management and about the wastage of water what are the solution we have to conserve water through rain water harvesting ground water recharge there are so many methods for this ground water recharge and rain water harvesting it should be mandatory i think in some states it is already mandatory but in other uh, states it should be mandatory for constructing rain water, water harvesting structures and we have to recharge the ground water because ground water is very precious we have to recycle and reuse of municipal and industrial waste water for the industries it is compulsory to uh, set up a stp when they uh, effluents their effluents are going to the water bodies this is must for industries and for other we have to recycle at home also we have to reuse the the municipal water bodies uh, utilizing increased return flow from irrigation the water comes from the irrigation but again it should not be go back to the soil it should be used the used also and inter basin transfer interlinking of rivers we have to be think over it we have to debate on these issues and there is virtual water virtual water means for a plant which has been grown and then produce the things and in that time how much water is uh, needed that is the hidden water or the virtual water we have to discuss later on because this is very very vast subject virtual water deep irrigation it should be adopted and minimize the water use in agriculture deep irrigation sprinkler because suppose if you want to be uh, 3 liter water per day 
I'm suppose if a bucket of water is to be drink by you, then what will happen? So the plants also need a little water. It is needed for the plants. It should be bear in mind and only drip irrigation or the sprinkler to be used. And this will be the water, I think, very good for the agriculture also. And there is direct relation of the surface water and the groundwater I mentioned. If the surface water is rich, you can reach the groundwater. More water use, more energy consumed. So if the water, if the groundwater table is depleted, you have to use pumps. And by using this pump, you have to use more energy. So we have to save the energy also. To save water, save energy. The groundwater will to recharge <coughs> consistently. We have to use groundwater to be recharged by all the means. So traditional methods of water conservation to be revived in rural and urban areas. So many talabs are there, the bodies are there, wells, open wells are there. So all these things should be revived, these traditional methods. Because after 20 years, you will not find any water bodies from where you can survive. Rivers and its tributaries to be clean and free from encroachment. This is very important because these, these are the surface waters. And if the surface water is rich, your groundwater will be rich. Rainwater harvesting should be mandatory in urban areas, depending on the hydrogeology of the area. Because the hydrogeologist uh, will give you a clear picture from where you can uh, install a rainwater harvesting, on which rock, on which site. So hydrogeologists should be appointed <clears throat> in each and every district. And there should be a separate state groundwater board and it should be function independently in state governments. We have to restate, restore uh, the conventional methods I mentioned, bowlies, juaras, poles, takas. We have to change the cropping pattern of agriculture. We have in cities, instead of public-private partnership, we have to use public-public partnership. That is the alternative for water crisis. People should be made aware and trained on the techniques of water conservation. And women should be trained in future programs, projects, they are because they are the water manager and they are the better utilization for the water. We have to preventing loss in municipal pipes. There should be leakages, it should be uh, clear. Effective rainwater harvesting in urban environment. Application of artificial recharge techniques, water scarce areas. Water conservation measures in agriculture, such as using drip irrigation. In deforested areas where land has been degraded, there should be a proper soil management by bending around these hill slopes and making nala plugs, which will be retain moisture and make it possible to revegetate degraded areas. And there should be a sustainable water management for coming years. We have to see the future. Save water campaigns are vital to make people everywhere attentive of the dangers of water scarcity. Develop small catchment dams and protect wetlands. Soil management properly, micro catchment development and afforestation. Treating and recycling municipal best water for agriculture use. And then one more important thing is preventing leakages from dams and canals. A lot of water, a lot of water is uh, I think draining out from the canals. This is all rainwater recharging process. Check dams are there. We have to maintain. This is a subsurface. If you want water here in this area, you have to make a subsurface dike. So you prevent this water. This is the aquifer. So by uh, putting this uh, subsurface dike, this water will not go this side and you will store the water here and you will supply the water from this side. This is the form ponds. We collect the rainwater into small ponds like this. So by this, by putting this, yeah, the wells are the surrounding of this form pond, they will reach. The groundwater table is also goes up and it certainly it will be used for uh, animals and the human beings also. So this is rainwater harvesting, simple thing. You catch the water from the roots and put it down by any means 
uh, putting in the inside, putting in the well, putting in the hand pump or anywhere. So with this rooftop water harvesting is compulsory and it should be mandatory. The area of catchment, if the, suppose this is the area, this is the amount of rainfall of your city and this is the uh, area of catchment of your roof, when you multiply it, the volume of water received, cubic meter. And this water will be certainly is for four months. You can use this water for four months, I promise. So groundwater recharge in urban areas also. This is recharge pit, recharge trench, tube well, recharge well. There are so many techniques. Uh, there are hopes we have to plant trees, avoid pollution, conserve water. There are technologies, innovations, water purification systems, seawater, water footprint. We have to save every drop of water. There must be a solution. Desalination. If after suppose after 50 years we won't get any water. So in the coastal areas, this is the Chennai. Is Minju about 35 kilometers north of Chennai, where 36.5 million cubic meters of water per year generated by 100 MLD million liters per day. This is the largest sea water desalination, and it is operated by National Institute of Ocean Technology (NIO2). NIOT. And desalinated water, and the cost is only six pice per liter. But the one-time installment is very, very costly. So when the time comes, we can use the oceanic water, saline water, and after desalination, like Dubai and the other Arab countries, we can use this type of desalination water for our further use. There are so many things, low flush toilet you can use in urban areas, maximum they are using. Uh, low flush toilet that is a, a two type 4.84 liter or less flush as a, opposed to six liter as in case of a conventional toilet so we can use uh, this type of uh, toilet by by saving uh, uh, billion of liters of water one more thing this is sensor based straw wall you must have seen in the airports toilets and malls in metro cities where the water flows on the urinals only when it is being used. It, it is stops automatically as the user moves away from the sensor. It consumes only 10% of the water, which otherwise would have been used for continuous flow of water. So such type of innovative ideas we have to maintain. We have to manage the water resources. When the time comes, innovations are there. The drip irrigation we have mentioned. So deep irrigation is sprinkler we have to use for the farms and the other conventional greenhouses. This is a ferro cement plant when there is a, uh, it's a very low cost uh, expensive water harvesting structure which contain of masonry, plastic, RCC. These tanks requiring material like sand, cement, mild steel, galvanized iron wire mesh and can be easily constructed by semi-skilled laborers. It's light in weight and can be molded into any shape required. It is believed to last for about 25 years with little maintenance. This all, you can construct it. You can put uh, below the ground also, uh, above the ground also. And rainfall should, be stored, should be stored in this uh, ferro cement plant. And that will be very useful also. The bamboo irrigation in the northeast Meghalaya, you might have seen. The, the farmers they are using uh, this bamboo irrigation and they are managing the water resources. This is a rainwater syringe using most of the Kerala and the Antoji, Mr. Antoji in Kerala, he has innovated the cost effective method for harvesting rainwater. About 150 tanks in coastal areas of Kerala. So, rainwater is collected from the rooftops of houses and is stored in a pressure tank. This is a pressure tank on the ground and with the help of PVC pipe, water is lowered below sea level because the sea level, sea water always above the uh, safe water, fresh water. So this uh, 
this fresh water is uh, lowered below the sea level the water is retained in the underground water column which is then harvested during summer by a simple piston pump or motor this is very useful in the kerala and mr antoji he has innovated this idea this is mr rajan singh johar you might have seen what is work india yeah waterman of india he has done exemplary work in uh, and constructed so many johars in uh, rajasthan area to collect the rain water and arrange uh, the complete area so the water so pits called madakas in karnataka pemgara in odisha johar in rajasthan and these are the one of the oldest system of water conservation recharge of water so they are constructed on area with naturally high elevation on three sides and soil is exploited to create a storage area and used to create a wall on the fourth side to hold water like this so the johar collect the monsoon water which slowly seeps into recharge ground water and maintains soil moisture so it both uh, recharge the ground water and it maintain the soil moisture these bowdies galaras step wells they are the old harvesting structures these uh, nowadays they are the dumping yards facebook page ek kala kitne join kar chuki hai and the uh, rain water should be collected in it because the volume of this uh, uh, step wells is more and more so will uh, the volume of this uh, step well will be more certainly so you can supply more water to the citizens so nano technology nowadays you are using for filtration so we have to uh, save every drop of water by motivation by group discussion by promotion by encouragement by creating awareness and awareness is must we have to aware each and every one uh, especially the budding child they must know the um, proper utility of water resources in 2019 government of india make a separate department this is jal shakti they are merging the former ministries the water resources river development and drinking water sanitation all the departments are merged and only one department is there that is jal shakti and they have government announced series of national initiatives jal shakti abhiyan it is to promote water conservation in 256 of india's most water stressed district jal jeevan mission to provide piped water connection to 146 million rural household by 2024 and atal bhujal yojana to improve groundwater management through community participation in seven indian states this is a very good initiative by government and by 2030 we will every citizen every villager will get the fresh water so you must know the environmental awareness is must we have to give training to school college students we have to provide lecture come demo local break can also uh, do better workshop seminars to be organized role of media is very important because the million of people they are reading newspaper by reading the newspaper by the reading the awareness about the water resources water management they must know the future of india public participation public participation means everybody those are related with the water or not they should uh, participate in a meeting and share some views about this problem also training to workers which are engaged in water sector this is must because they are the only uh, this is the only sector which goes to the schools and, and gives training to the college and school students one management plan i made and give an example of bhopal is the population of bhopal about 20 lakhs now it's become a, uh, 28 but the families on the basis of the 20 lakhs is about 4 lakhs take the five members in a one family so about 4 lakhs families are there in bhopal 4 lakhs you can save 10 liter at least by saving from each and every uh, activity by uh, shaving by doing kitchen work 
while doing washing your clothes, anything, whatever uh, small things you are doing at home, by by doing this you can save ten liter. At least you can save ten liter. It's very bigger amount. So this ten liter of uh, water you can save daily, and if you multiply by this four lakh families, it becomes forty lakh liter water. And forty lakh liter of water without any uh, government support, you are uh, simply you are doing yourself. So by this you can save this much of water. And if you think of this is only of Bhopal, if you think of uh, uh, complete India, how much water you can save is a tremendous. One more, uh, I think uh, I request one and all on your birthday, anniversary day, or memorable day. You have to plant a tree at your residence, institution, office premises. Please maintain it, and you save our earth. You save our food. This is my humble request to each and every one. And things to remember: you see, save every drop of water. Every drop counts. Stop leakages at home. Up to her say. You motivate to others also. You aware the common man about the importance of water and application of modern techniques. This is very must. So innovative ideas must be applied from home. And things to remember: there are three R, but I have I have given five R. Reduce the requirement of water to save the water, like ten liter of water. You reduce the requirement of water. You reuse the water. Recycle the water. Rejuvenate the water bodies. Whatever in your city or anywhere, you rejuvenate the water bodies. And last and of course, it is respect to the water bodies. This is very important. Most of important solution is think globally and act locally. This is the mission, Jal Sapat, Government of India. You have to use water resources promptly. You have to save water in the world. So this is all about uh, water management, groundwater, and when groundwater is very very precious, very important. You have to uh, manage the water resources, especially the groundwater resources, because if the groundwater is contaminated, you cannot repair the groundwater. And in the future. We need only groundwater, and if the groundwater is depleted down, we have to recharge groundwater every year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rao Sir, for calling me, for inviting me for this nice talk. And for uh, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, really, it was uh, excellent. Uh, very good message, and uh, I'm sure it will uh, reach to the larger section of uh, society. Mm -hmm. Really, the uh, yeah. uh, five mantras: reduce, reuse, recycle, rejuvenate the water bodies, and respect the water bodies. <laughs> From traditional point of view till uh, the modern era, you have completely uh, means covered. It's almost one and a half an hour, sir. That's what Professor Sir uh, means. Normally, uh, in our um, lectures, we keep it for 30 to 40 minutes. It's almost one and a half an hour. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, and I'm sure this will take a very good message to the society. Awareness is a must, and yeah, um, yeah. everyone should uh, try on their uh, level. Think globally, act, act lo locally. Yeah, it's a must. And uh, if you don't, then uh, you see, uh, in your presentation, you have very <laughs> clearly mentioned in 2006, uh, 1730 yes, yes. Uh, meter water was per capita consumption. Yes, yes. By 2025, it has come to 1341, 1341. If the situation doesn't improve, then by 2050, it will be 11 to 40 uh, cubic meters water. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Really alarm. 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 Alarm
अरे भाई सब ओडिशा में पानी का कमी किधर है ओडिशा में इफ इट डोंट टेक प्रिकॉशन देन सिचुएशन विल कम लाइक चेन्नई आल्सो ऑन सम आफ्टर सेवरल इयर्स सो एवरीवन हैज टू टेक केयर एट देयर लेवल मींस थिंक ग्लोबली एंड एक्ट लोकली थैंक यू सर वी विल एंड दिस सेशन हियर बिफोर वी एंड दिस सेशन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ढेंकनल साइंस सेंटर थैंक्स अ लॉट सर with a short notice and uh, you have given consent and delivered this excellent lecture uh, uh, let me is it available on facebook is it available yeah, yeah, it is live in our facebook and uh, youtube also later it will be uh, mostly it will be um, live streamed in our um, ncs national council of science museums uh, uh, social media pages i'll share the links sir eh? Okay. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank thanks you. a lot, and thanks to our viewers. Again, we'll uh, meet. Please Some provide me a certificate. Yes, yes, sir. I'll do that. Thank you, sir. Okay, so, okay. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll do that. Should I leave? Should I leave? Uh huh. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. okay.